Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. It is League Unlock. Welcome back, Eric and Mark here with you beauties for another LCS 2024 preview. This time we are going full player rankings, all five positions. I swear it's the last time I'll make this joke. That's actually a lie. It won't be, but only eight players to go through means you can fly through these positions. Easy breezy in the LCS with only eight squads to look through. And not to be a bit of a downer, I think there is going to be some room to look at every position that we go through and realize, well, thankfully it is only eight that you're having to run through down because some of the talent yeah, it starts to dissipate in the LCS when you're looking at those lower numbers and or either it's one of those question mark situations where you don't know what's going to happen. You can't feel confident enough to make a prediction. It's only the world of the LCS. And that's why we do these way too early rankings before we've even seen any games out of these guys on their new teams. But on paper, I'm going to say, I'm going to highlight specifically top lane and AD carry look like the weakest across the board that we've seen in a couple of years when you look at that top lane. Maybe General Sniper comes in and is a complete godsend, lives up to this insane hype and immediately ascends to that top three status. But we got him about as conservative as you possibly can. And he's going to have to earn some trust as a rookie. The safety cushion prediction for Mr. General Sniper starting out very, very cautious with him in his career, but certainly a player that we have seen and I'm sure you guys have heard throughout the community, a lot of potential, a lot of upside with a player like this, waiting to see if that initial debut is gonna be an explosion for him this split in the LCS. And there is definitely potential that he could climb all the way up. Even Fake God's a guy who absolutely deserving to be back in the LCS. Excited to see the growth that we saw out of him from Academy. But as you start climbing up this top lane, you're going, okay. I mean, Fudge at five maybe seems harsh, but he was not good, really. Despite Cloud9 having another solid year, he was kind of a liability alongside Jimenez towards the second end of that split. I think it's a, a bad rating pretty much all across the board for someone like Fudge this past year. What he did with Cloud9, you look domestically, not anywhere close to the domination or peak level of form that we have seen from him before within this, you know, either spring or summer splits. And then you extend that to internationally. And I think it's gotten even worse. Some of the problems and performances that we have seen from him individually for Cloud9 at that stage and with the expectation, with that bar, rising up in the demands of people on what you can do with the powerful premier roster in the LCS, that question comes down to Fudge, and I think he is absolutely demoted into this tier where he is now in prove or shut up type of mode. And a guy also looking to prove ahead of him is Bwipo, and I know people might be saying, this dude hasn't played in a year. How do you put him ahead of somebody like Fudge? But I think you and I are both pretty confident that Bwipo can pretty quickly get back to that upper echelon of top laners in the LCS. And he's also boosted up, I will say, a healthy amount by where he is going to be landing for this split. Obviously, with FlyQuest and the opportunity that presents himself there, it really is one of those situations where I think we can see the very best out of Bwipo, that peak, that pinnacle that we have seen from him before with Fnatic, the creativity from him in that role in the top side within an organization like FlyQuest, we're going to see that roll through full form. I bet you we're ranking Bwipo higher as we're getting through into the early parts of the season. Impact ahead of him as Mr. Consistent. We put Rich ahead because... He's got the flair. You feel like there's the carry potential. He's, I guarantee you, the only uh, dig player that's hanging out in this top two area heading into the split, but not enough to be taken down. Big Dokes in that number one spot. Big Dokes, Big Daddy NRG. Yes, resigned to the organization. Very happy to see him get rewarded after what was a kind of that climb to the top year for him all the way back. You look at the optic days, not fulfilling that potential in that role that he had for them, being counted on for that carry, goes through the academy scene, gets that triumphant return with NRG and gets some shine, some praise on the international stage as well. Let's see another year of that from Mr. Big Dokes. Continue to get some growth and be earning that number one spot. Be the main challenger for guys like Pwipo, Rich, and other top laners in the league. Roll into the jungle, and this is maybe the role I'm most excited about in the LCS because you've got a combo of 
you know, promising rookie in XU. See what he can get hyped up with. You've got a lot of returning familiar faces and umpty in this number five spot. Again, a conservative one. He's had moments in the LCK, and I wouldn't be surprised if he does come in and play at an all-pro level. But again, a conservative middle-of-the-ground spot start for him. This is where I think you might start to see a trend of this becoming the question mark zone when you're looking through these players and what they can do, what they can offer. It's not about do they have the skills. You know that they do. They know that they can be impact players. Are you going to see it consistently enough? Or is it going to fit within the system or the style of play that his teammates, the organization wants to put through? Those are going to be the questions for some of these guys. And Umpty is absolutely one that finds himself in that position, knowing his raw skill, his talent, could push him up to that top level in the LCS at this point. But it all is expecting that it goes to plan with this Team Liquid roster. It's going to be the second time that we're really seeing this TLCK edition different time now with Umpty in the jungle room. Yeah, and obviously one of the main reasons for that is his English is so much more advanced than what we got out of Piosik when he came over. Umpty was already doing his introductory video in English pretty much the whole way through. So he's going to fit right in with the squad. But the top three for these junglers is where I think you get excited and it's the best top three of any of these positions when you're going Blabber inspired a couple MVPs and contracts the level that he just came from at the World Championship smacking G2 for two straight games. Feeling good about at least jungle in the LCS. And I love having contracts here at this number three position because it is the proper promotion for him in the established order of the junglers we have in the LCS. And as well, it is that leapfrog over a player like River who we saw have some struggles towards the end of his stay with the Golden Guardians, but still looking at his potential for a bounce back. Contracts in at number three sets up that top two. As you mentioned, looking at it, you got inspired, you got labber. What else could you want? If you're an LCS fan, you feel like, you know, maybe there's some talk about whether how impactful the jungle position is. That's a separate conversation. But you want to have impactful players in the jungle? You got them with Blabber and Inspired leading the charge. And obviously, we'll get to mid lane. But Blabber with the new look, Cloud9, I feel like going to be an even lethal, more lethal dosage of him in that jungle coming into this year. And Umpty, when he came in, he already said, I'm going for the top. I hear Blabber's good. I'm going to smack him. I'm going to take him down. That's uh, paraphrasing there. <laughs> Obvious, guys. Umpty wasn't saying that. But uh, inspired, much like Whippo, it's been a year. Are we worried about him returning to pro play? And the answer for me is no, not at all. No question. Given the climate that we have seen from Jungle, given the picks that we have seen from Jungle, and knowing the changes that are coming with the game, League of Legends, and the opportunities that will be there for a jungler to make it painful days for some of these laners in the LCS. Yeah, dial me up some inspired coming to my lane. I would love to see that. I would love to be seeing FlyQuest get back to that, you know, top tier level that they should have been throughout all of 2023, but never were quite able uh, to reach those levels into that mid lane where the bottom half here, you can talk about this era of lck korean imports coming over when you have mask who has played on unicorns of love sexy edition dove the strangest signing quid on the top of these quid is maybe the guy among mid laners where if the growth and development if he's nurtured in 100 thieves he could be climbing towards top three even with a very different expectations and a very different surrounding cast for a player like Quid with 100 Thieves stepping into this 2024 season, I've got a lot of hope. I've got a lot of, uh, you know, hopium copium trying to see the payoff for what is the potential that we know and have seen in the past going back to the Gen G Academy stage for him. This is certainly a player that has seen a couple of those glimpses of the sunshine throughout that early parts of it but i think now getting that stable base different expectations even with the different surrounding cast at a different level i've got faith that we do start to see a little bit more of that power level rising for a player like quit and again give the guy an actual fighting chance you remember he came a few weeks into the second split already uh in summer for last year so give him a full off season with the team give him a full split to get under his feet, another year actually being in North America. I think we're going to see a very different looking 
quid in this here and we're gonna see a very different looking APA because the same exact thing can be applied to him give him a full split he's now learned at worlds okay yeah faker is really good gotcha write that down <laughs> you want the extra cherry on top for motivation for APA shutting up summit who's not even in the LCS anymore I believe this is absolutely gonna be a split gonna be a year where we see that champion pool that knowledge of being a professional what it takes to be that leader in such a vital role the mid lane for a team like team liquid that does have playoff hopes that does have hopes to do some damage and try to get to these international events absolutely gonna be a big growing year for someone like APA and I'd be on the side betting on him coming out on top and playing something other than Ziggs, although if I'm him to stick with the summit, I'm hovering that every single <laughs> game. Oh, you've got to hover the NAR, man. That's the real NAR, one Ziggs, for me. NAR, Ziggs, NAR, Ziggs, right back. That's, <laughs> that's the behind the scenes that you do. But heading into 2024, Mark, look at this. The top three mid laners, all domestic North American talent. When you go Insanity, Palafox, and JoJo Pion. I feel like we're going to see JoJo transcend and reach even new heights. I mean, the dude won MVP in the summer split, but I'm I'm fully engorging myself on the Cloud9 hype. It's been a while since we have had an individual player gap so significant that I think that JoJo Pyun is going to be able to showcase this year for Cloud9, taking over that mid lane position for what is now without question to me the premier north american league of legends squad you've got him rolling in that position he's going to be talking the trash talk he's going to be having the memes but i bet you the gameplay is going to be backing it up from your boy jojo Pyon. and that's even scarier because the trash talk becomes fully unleashed when they're backing it up uh, with wins on the rift but we're not sleeping on palafox and insanity as well palafox coming off a great world championship again the core who he the only change coming to that defending champion roster and insanity getting re-signed much like apa i'm, I'm ready to see more growth out of him Palafox, major experience and lessons learned on the international stage not just lessons learned and we're talking about the normal north american lessons learned where you get beat down by one of these lpl or lck teams i'm also talking about the successes against Europe that he managed to accomplish, as well as learning how to handle the pressure, all the different type of things. I think it's going to be a massive gain for the player leading NRG in the mid lane and as well Insanity getting this return with Shopify Rebellion. Good to see him coming back. Low expectations still more or less for the squad. Returning with Boogie as his jungler. Going to see another good year out of Insanity. And you know he's going to be the featured guy in this TSM lineup. Uh, or, excuse me. Shopify Rebellion. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> we'll see how many times we end up doing that. Uh, we'll probably about 100, as we did with CLG and NRG for a little bit. So many new names to be remembered coming into next year's LCS split. Now we're rolling in to that bot lane, and I mentioned it. You know, top lane, maybe not as stacked as we're accustomed to seeing. AD carry historically is usually the role in the LCS in North America that has the most talent and not quite feeling it coming into this year. You look at the bottom half, you've got Jan all the way at five, Bevoy, we've kind of talked about Tomo, room to grow, Tactical still having a starting spot, but it's 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 looking bleak. I'm going to say that for AD carries, unless these rookies who we have way up there, Meech and Masu, I think they're living up to the hype and they're going to deliver. I've got a bit of an answer for why I think the ADC pool is a little bit weaker. You look as well, missing two teams from the LCS. Normally, you know, you expect that maybe, you know, eight, eight teams instead of 10, you're going to get better quality. You still have some dumb decisions going on or wonky ones or questionable choices going in the LCS. That takes up a spot or two. Zven, double F, two iconic players that have been in the LCS, major players, not with starting spots, not even in the league with double F retiring and Zven not here for these opportunities. You're looking at the new guns, the young guns. As you said, looking for someone to step up. That is why they find themselves here. It is that unproven. It is that question mark still remaining on them. I've got the Hopium take. Tactical. Do we even see him return to the old potential? Or is it all gone and washed away and it's only Tristana gameplay? Uh, Tristana Malphite gameplay, that is, from him nowadays. We'll have to see. But it is the rest on this list that I think you can 
feel those hopium angles can look for something special and even with someone like b-boys down here someone that we have criticized this type of move for tsm i think there have been a couple of rumblings couple leaks coming out that do feel awfully hopeful for what he could do for the shopify rebellion team and I know people are going to say, how, how are you going to put two rookies, three and four, on this list? But if you've watched any of the games out of Meech, he was one of the most electrifying players in the entire academy scene. Masu has, his trajectory has been insane, picking up an NACL MVP. And the guy used to be playing from Toronto on 120 ping in pro games and keeping up. That is one of the most insane things to talk about astronomical gap there managing the handle the lag the gap the ping he doesn't care whatsoever he's dishing out the damage of the adc roll yes those two are absolutely the ones that do stand out out of this crop that we are going to have uh when you're looking at who's going to prove themselves this year and especially with opportunities in front of them where they do need to be that type of damage they do need to have that capability and step up hoping to see the best from and what's important for both of them is obviously when you're a rookie, your support is going to be key. They've got Busio and Ayla who are kind of straddling that young player veteran line. They've been around for a little, but I'm not ready to call them big veterans yet. So opportunity for both bot lanes to grow together as a whole. And really, when you look at this list, we love FBI. But if FBI is legit the second best AD carry in the region, I'm not feeling great about it. Yeah, you got problems if that's going to be the situation. And that is just simply coming down to the equation of no matter how you slice it, the AD carry, even understanding there is the unpredictable chance that when the patch comes around in these important international events, the ADC is useless. That doesn't happen all that often. And more often than not, it's actually heightened the importance of that role and having someone incredibly skilled at pumping out that damage. FBI is great. He just needs to take that step into excellent is the problem. And, and when you're looking at the rest of these teams heading to international events in that second seed, they're absolutely sending excellent ADC. So that is where the problem begins for me looking at that list. But then it's kind of solved because I ignore everything. And I look at that number one and I'm reassured that we got a king that can contend with the rest of the kings in the bottom just, lane, Mr. Berserker. Just erase the other nine names and you see Berserker. But I'm looking at this list and I'm legitimately saying, is this guy even going to be challenged? He's going to be stagnant in these splits because I don't feel like any bot lane has a chance against Cloud9. I think it's going to cause a lot of teams to have to get creative because not only is there going to be obviously the major threat that Berserker is going to present having this type of clear skill and performance gap and experience gap on a lot of these ADCs that he will be going up against. You're also adding in, well, are you preparing and trying to you know, plan to set back Berserker well, then you got Jojo Pion becoming a problem. And then, wait a minute, where's Blabber heading off and setting everything up? That is the Cloud9 monster you got to deal with. Yeah, it is an absolute nightmare matchup for everyone in the LCS going up against this Titanic Cloud9 roster. Lastly, we drop in to that support role. And this is another one that I'm actually excited for because it's got a nice balance of young talent coming up and some veterans looking to refine their form. Ole's a guy who it feels it's been years since we've seen around the LCS making his return. See if he can prove that he's still LCS starting caliber. Isles is another guy that we've seen before in the LCS, but he's still a young player with lots of room to grow. Zazel, I'm maybe the most excited for on this list. Not one, because he's got such an incredible beard. Two, he's such a likable dude. And three, he's an exciting player. You listen to any of Disguised Team's comms, some of his calls are just kill these noobs. <laughs> I, 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 lo I love his energy, man. Hey, he's a true gamer at his heart. Bring him on, Mr. Zazel. Fear the beard. Yes, back in the LCS. Very excited to see him get this opportunity once again, as well as you mentioned. Ole, a guy who has completed his military service in Korea and then found himself pretty high up on the Korean solo queue charts, finding even that top rank at one point. He's now come back to the LCS, of course. But these guys are going to be fantastic. I do like the support position, the, the mixture that we do have here in the LCS. I think you look at some of these other ones. We've talked about them, the question marks that still exist. I think in the support positions, they're less about the question marks and more about what flavor you're liking from your support. Yeah, and again, Busio and Ayla paired with these rookie AD carries. Those are the two bot lanes that I've got the most hope 
for at least contending with somebody like Berserker on Cloud9, assuming you give them some time to develop, build up that synergy, but the absolutely the talent, the mechanical prowess is there for both of those bot lanes. And the top three are kind of the three-headed beast that has been the triumvirate of supports in the LCS for the last couple of years. You're talking who he Vulcan, and even though Core JJ hasn't been at that peak level the last couple of years, he's absolutely still in that top three. But what I love about this top three is absolutely, you know, kind of just obviously it's a it is the clear top three out of the support positions, but it's all three of these supports got something to prove this time around that they got to do better than they did last year and find a way to be more impactful for their squads. Core JJ, easy one to outline. This guy has been without question during his stay with Team Liquid the top support or the second best support in the region. So being bumped down to the third one is that indication of a little bit of a slip up of that decline last year. How much of that is him individually? How much of that was part of the project with Team Liquid? How much of that is Giannis' is ADC? Well, guess what? Jan is still the ADC again this year. So it's going to have to be better regardless in that type of situation for Core JJ. You add up to Vulcan with the way things went overall throughout the year with Evil Geniuses. And then you look through at the, the ending run with FlyQuest individually i think still a fantastic player but has to got to prove it at that team level to get it done with this new iteration and then as well you go back to the guy at the top who he i think he didn't have the best type of performance down the stretch run for golden guardians and especially in that play-in type of game against bds he's got that challenge as our top spot and you know Vulcan obviously talked a lot of trash when he went to that FlyQuest squad and they were ready to dominate and they got dominated. So I'm sure he's not going to stop trash talking, but he's on a much better scenario to be able to doing that. And both he and Huhi, Vulcan returning to his former team in Cloud9, Huhi going way back. I'm saying he's returning to CLG because NRG still carrying on the spirit of counter logic gaming so two guys having a bit of a homecoming and obviously core jj is captain america mr team liquid but excited to see redemption for all three of those support kings but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beautiful people thanks for watching as always and we'll catch you on that flippity flip